G'day, Tom Gillespie here. So recently I had the pleasure of uh, interviewing Elon Musk. Some of you to refer to him as Sir Elon Musk out there in crypto land, but essentially we sat down and we talked a little bit about his involvement in the shitcoin pumpamentals and the various aspects of crypto currencies uh, in you know in his earlier and what what he's been up to this this uh, this year regarding scooter coin and the inevitable downfall of the technology known as cryptocurrency so I'm going to share with you now a snippet of that interview and you can see the full interview will be coming out shortly afterwards, but enjoy. Yes, yes, well listen, Elon, I would beg to differ. Um, Dogecoin has no hard cap, so, you know, essentially they can print as many of them as they want, so it doesn't make any sense what you just said, actually. Yeah, um... Anyway... As you are familiar with the uh, scooter coin and Bitman 360, I want I want to try to understand scooter coin pay. Yeah. Stripes stripes eating them slowly. But they're doing they're doing a pretty good job. But they're, they're, the banks are in trouble if if it's not stripe it'll be somebody else. Uh-huh. Well listen, you invested a lot of money in scooter coin. What's your hopes and dreams for the future of scooter coin exactly? I'm neither here nor there. Scooter to coin. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. Well, considering you're probably one of the larger investors in Scooter Coin, can you? You would have seen Batman 360's manifesto. What were your thoughts on the on his on his um, ideas and philosophy around Scooter Coin? That was pretty clever. Yeah, okay. Well, what about the activities in the dark market? The various scootering crimes going on in the dark market. What are your what are your thoughts on on how that might unfold going forward? It, it, it's it's just like the th things yeah. <laughs> this always gets like the crypto people angry, but uh, I think it, uh, there are, there are, there are transactions that are um not within the bounds of the law, um, and those, and there are obviously many laws in different countries, and normally cash is used for these transactions. Um, but but ca but in order for illegal transactions to occur, those the cash must also be used for legal transactions. You need an, uh, an illegal to legal bridge. Um, that's where crypto comes in. Can't be entirely yeah. dark because otherwise, how do you buy normal stuff? And, and cash these days is used just much rarer. It's, it's hard. It's like increasingly difficult to use cash. Some places you can't use cash at all. So th th there's a, there's a forcing function for uh, transactions that are Ill illegal, quasi legal, and in some cases legal. But it's, it's got to have some. It's got to be both legal and illegal. It doesn't count otherwise. Otherwise, you simply it, it, it can't just be transactions within uh, an illegal economy. Because how do you buy like you know food in a house or something? You know, you, go, you must have a legal to illegal bridge. Um, so where I see crypto as effectively as a replacement for cash, but not as a replacement for as a primary. Uh, not, not as, I do not see crypto being the primary database. Now, this is, this is sometimes taken being like, I'm being judgmental about crypto. And it's actually, I think there's a lot of things that are illegal that shouldn't be illegal. Um, um, but, you know, so it's not as though, I think that sometimes governments just have too many laws about that they, should, that they should have, shouldn't have so many things that are illegal. <laughs> you said it, mate, not me. So, now this is this is sort of take.